in this lecture, um, I want to talk about how to build a simple pocket calculator. So if you were to do this in the lab, what you need is a, a display, adders and subtractors, and inputs, right? So the display could be a seven segment display, like the one you've seen already in the lab. Switches, similarly, um, could be the inputs. What's missing really is sort of a way to, to implement numbers in binary and to, to manipulate them, to do ar arithmetic with them. So I'm going to assume that you already know binary numbers, that you're comfortable converting from binary to decimal and back. And you know, it's also heard of hexadecimal numbers and can convert between them, between them and uh, binary numbers, etc. And so on this slide, I just want to briefly remind you of how addition and subtractions are done. And the main idea here is that as addition and subtractions are essentially done in the same way as you would do it with decimal numbers, except that it's um, base 2 instead of base 10. So I just pre filled this. If you're not quite sure anymore how to do you know, arith arithmetic with um, binary numbers, it might be worthwhile for you to try and, and do this yourself. But the basic idea here is on the right-hand side, if you have two binary numbers that you want to add up, 1 plus 1, where it's 2, which is 1, 0, so it's 0, carry 1. Again, 1 plus 1, 0, carry 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1, here is 3, 1, 1, so 1, carry 1, etc., etc. And the operations are really completely analogous to what you see on the left-hand side um, for, for decimal numbers. Similarly, when you do subtractions, again, just looking at the binaries, right? you want to do it sort of position by position. Uh, in the first position, you're asked to do subtract 1 from 0, which here you can't. So what you have to do is you have to borrow a, uh, a 1. So basically, then the operation becomes you're actually subtracting 1 from 1, 0, which is 2. So 2 minus 1 is 1. But since you borrowed, you have to carry the 1. Now you're trying to subtract essentially 1 plus 1 from 1. So borrow another higher order 1, which means you get a 1, 1 here. So 3 minus 2 is 1, carry 1. Again, 3 minus 2 is 1, carry 1. 2 minus 2 is 1, 2 minus 1 is 1, carry 1, etc., etc. So if this all is completely new, hopefully it isn't, but if it is, um, I recommend that you kind of just remind yourself of how these operations are, are done. Um, similarly, um, multiplication is actually quite nice in binary. So you're, it's again, it's kind of similar to what you would do with decimal numbers. Let's say you want to multiply these two numbers, 1001 and 1011. Essentially, you just multiply this position by position. So you're saying, um, 1001 by 1 is 1001. Then shift by one position, multiply with the next um, bit, which again is a 1 times 1001. Shift over, now comes a 0. So you have a bunch of zeros. Shift over one more time. And again, it's multiplication by 1. And what's kind of neat and a little different from decimal numbers is that the only multiplications you ever do is by 0 and by 1. So it's either writing a bunch of zeros or copying the value of one of the numbers. And the other operation that you're going to do is just shift numbers to the left. Once you've done this, sort of bit by bit, you can just add up all the values in each column, and you get the result of the multiplication. And so what's really nice here, as we'll see, and we'll talk about how to do this later, is essentially that all you have to do to do multiplications is shifting and sh copying, shifting, and adding. Good. So now <coughs> um, we want to sort of talk about how, um, you know, what the circuitry looks like that actually performs these operations. And right, the first thing again is we want to look at um, a half adder. So as a quick reminder, let's say you have two numbers. 1001 and 1110 that you're trying to add. So this first operation, actually let me change that a little bit to something more interesting. Um, let's do this. So 1 plus 1 is 0, 
carry 1. 0 plus 1 plus 1 is 0, carry 1, da, 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 etc. The point I want to make here is that in this first operation, you essentially have two inputs, 1 and 1. Okay? The two, the two bits here. And a circuit that just takes two inputs and adds them up and produces a sum, the zero here, and a carry, the one here, is called a half adder. Okay? So the truth table of a half adder is, is given here. So zero plus zero, obviously, is zero. Carry zero, sum zero. Zero plus one is one. One plus zero is one. One plus one is two. So essentially, carry is one, sum is zero. Okay. From this truth table, you can either use the K-maps or just intuition to immediately derive the circuit diagram you see here at the bottom. Now, on the next page, um, we'll talk about full adders. And that's the circuit you're going to use here. So in this next column, so to speak, essentially you have to add three inputs together. right? You have the inputs A and B, which corresponds to the the bits of the numbers, the original numbers that you want to add up. But you also have to add in the carry from the lower order circuit. So essentially what you do is you're adding three inputs together to again produce a sum and a carry. And this is the truth table for a full adder. So again, here you have the three, cer the three inputs, A, B, and the carry from the lower order. Um, you can convince yourself um, that this is sort of the correct additive behavior over here. So basically 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 0 plus 1 is 1, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it'd probably be a good exercise for you to take this truth table and essentially use K-maps and what you've learned in, in the class to design circuits that actually realize this truth table. Um, I've done it here for you, but of course, it'd be good um, if you if you use this as a as a practice exercise. Now, here are the solutions. I don't know if they're particularly insightful, but the main point to make here is that in order to design an adder, what you essentially need are half adders and full adders that allows you to kind of do the arithmetic in in each particular position. And here we have. An example of, of a sort of example, a realization of these necessary devices um, in basic logic gates. So maybe the last thing uh, I want to do in this short video is essentially combine multiple such basic elements into a larger circuit. And specifically, I want to do multi-bit addition. So exactly the problem that we essentially started out with. Right? So the idea here is that you have two binary numbers, A and B. They have, in this case, four bits. We're going to add A0 and B0 together to create um, a sum S0, and also a carry. I'm going to write it up here, C0. And then I have to add in the next operation, C0, A1, and B1, which gives S1 and C1. And then S2, C2, S3, C3. OK, and then I want to just add one other thing that's important. In practice, we're often or going to deal with sort of fixed width number formats. So it's kind of odometer, odometer math. And so essentially, if, the, re if this, the result of your addition, the number that results from your addition is larger than the format, you can't actually sort of capture that result correctly. And you're going to have a carry. And in this case, you just have to drop that carry. We'll later think about um, how to deal, like how to at least know whether you kind of have this kind of behavior or whether you don't. But there's essentially nothing f you can do um, other than just get rid of this last carry. <coughs> okay, so that's so now.
coming back to sort of the, the circuit design problem, what we're going to do is the following. So essentially, as I've kind of outlined earlier, right, you can think of each column here as its own little individual module. So you just look at A0 and B0 first, and you're going to say, well, I'm just going to add them together. And really, all I need for that is a half adder. But it may be more convenient to just have a single module for everything. And so instead of putting a half adder here, I'm just going to put a full adder here. But I'm adding in a 0 into the carry in. Then similarly, I'm going to then I'm going to produce a carry out. That carry out gets fed into the next into the carry in at the next layer. Is added together with these inputs, and the signal sort of ripples through this circuit. Okay. So this particular architecture, and again here this is to carry out, that we're going to have to ignore. And this particular architecture is referred to as a ripple carry adder for the obvious sort of reason that the carry value sort of ripples through one layer after the other. And this particular circuit is really maps directly onto what you would do if you add numbers by hand. In practice, this is not a particularly efficient or not a particularly fast architecture. And so there's other versions um, of adders, like carry look-ahead adders, that you know, have smarter ways in some ways with dealing with, with carries, or that essentially trade off circuit depths here. So they make circuits less deep using essentially more components. But in this particular class, we don't need to really think about that. And it's, um, I think, just understanding how a, uh, a ripple carry adder works will, will be sufficient. On this last slide, I'll briefly go over how to you know, write or make an adder using Verilog. So you know, again, you start with this module that's called uAdd. And here we're going to say we're going to introduce a concept or reuse a concept of the concept of a parameter, um, which we'll see how it's used later on. But we're going to say that there's a parameter called width and it has the value 8. Okay. There's also outputs um, and inputs to this mod module. The output's called out and has a width. Um, as I mentioned, it has the size width plus 1. And the inputs a and b have size width, essentially. So they're 8-bit numbers, and the output is a 9-bit number. So we kind of here um, don't fix the, the size of the, of the numbers because we don't have to. Um, then the really nice part comes next. So basically, we want to have this an always at star block, because we're going to do combinational logic. So always at star begin, out is equal to a plus b. So this is all you have to know about addition um, to build an adder in um, using sort of behavioral, behavioral um, very log. Right, so this is so in the previous few slides, we really talked about sort of the like the adders at the at the circuit level, how to build them out of AND and OR gates, or how to build half adders and full adders out of AND and OR gates, and then how to compose them into multi-bit adders. But to actually use adders in Verilog, all you have to do is just write A plus B, which is really quite nice. So the symbol of an adder um, looks something like this. So you have this trapezoid. I don't know what that shape is. Here, that's my adder. Inputs A and B, right? These wires have size width. And then the output here has size width plus 1. And as I did earlier, like if I just draw this dash through the wires, that's just to indicate that it really represents multiple nut wires, namely in this case here of the inputs width wires. OK, so that's an adder. Now in this next example, we're sort of going to combine a few of these adders into, into a more into a bigger adder circuit. So we're going to have this module add 4. Um, it has inputs A, B, C, D, and output out. Um, you have to be careful here. So the, the output here is 
of size w plus 1, and we've introduced a new parameter, w, which has takes the value of 22. And the inputs are sort of two, um, two sizes smaller, two bits smaller. They're size w minus 1. And there's, as I said, four of them. OK, so now I want to compose these systems into a essentially a 4-bit or a, an adder for four numbers. Um, and I'm first going to draw what I want to build, because that's in some ways very intuitive. So here's the circuit I want. right? So I have two adders here that allow me to add together A and B. And the other one adds together C and D. Then I take the outputs and add them together um, one more time. And so this, these wires here, A and B, which I've written that down, have width W. While these intermediate wires, A, B, and C, D, have width W plus 1. And then, of course, this one here has the width um, W plus 2. So maybe I should write that in the right place. OK? So this is the structure that you want. And so now the question is, what's the sort of the very long code corresponding to this? So I've outlined the part of it up here. So the module is called add 4. The parameter here is w equals um, 22. There's, as I said, an, an output and four inputs. Outputs have width w plus 1. Inputs have width w minus 1. Now in this particular case, just looking at this graphic, I also have to define wires that are intermediate that are within the system. right? So I have wires of width w plus 1. And I've called them A, B, and C, D. And then I can essentially combine, again, this is kind of obvious from the graphic, I can specify this whole system by, by making reference to this sort of smaller module U add defined above. Right? So basically, I have to have one adder here, U add, um, where into the value width into the position of the parameter width up here, I'm substituting the value of w. And I'm going to call this u a b, because it uh, produces a b. And it has output a b, inputs a and b. Similarly, I can do this for an adder that adds c and d. So you C D, C D, C comma D. Okay, and then finally, I have to define this last uh, adder that essentially takes A B and C D as inputs. So this is again calling the same module, but now we have to be careful because here we actually need a slightly bigger adder. So width is. In the position of width, we're going to use w, the parameter value w plus 1. We're going to call this u, a, b, c, d. And as an output, out, and inputs a, b, and c, d. OK, and then that's it. Actually, end module is already down here, so I don't need to rewrite it. So that's the basic um, an adder in Verilog.